now we go to some clinical problems related with the spleen. Let's suppose if someone's spleen is removed, right, what may happen? Actually, if uh, your spleen is removed, for example, someone get trauma to the spleen. If someone get injury to the spleen and spleen start bleeding heavily, surgeon will prefer to remove the spleen totally, right? Surgeons do under these circumstances very commonly when spleen is injured and bleeding fastly, surgeon do splenectomy. Patients who are with the persons who are with the splenectomy, they develop special type of substances in the RBCs which are called hovel jolly bodies. Now let me tell you. When RBCs are released from bone marrow house, this is your bone marrow house, and when RBCs come from bone marrow house to circulation, right, they may have some pieces of chromatin there. Some pieces of chromatin there. Actually, when RBCs are passing through the spleen, these pieces of chromatin are removed. Normally, when RBCs are synthesized by the bone marrow house and these RBCs are released in general circulation, newly formed RBCs are having uh, some pieces of chromatin which stain in blue color, right? Basophilic color with the hematoxylin you have seen. Now, when fresh RBCs passes through, passes through the spleen, then these chromatin materials are removed by the macrophages. Is that right? And RBCs become without these chromatin material. But if someone has his spleen removed, then many RBCs in such patient will have these remnants of chromatin. And these remnants of chromatin are called hovel jolly bodies. What are they called? Hovel jolly bodies. So one of the feature, one, one of the change in the blood after splenectomy is their blood RBCs contain hovel jolly bodies. Secondly, if splenectomy is done, especially in early age, children, then such people who have undergone splenectomy sometimes they suffer with very, very severe bacterial infections. The risk of bacterial septicemia is very high in the patients with splenectomy because if, uh, if spleen is removed, then bacteria which are present in the blood, they are not filtered out and against them, immune response is not properly developed. So post splenectomy situation, patients with post splenectomy, right, they have a high risk of developing bacterial infection, especially nazaria, meningitis, meningitis, hem hemophilus, influenzae, this is a bacteria, and streptococcus, pneumonia, pneumonia, pneumococci also, they are called streptococcus pneumonia were also called pneumococci. Actually removal of these, these are capsulated, capsulated bacteria, Nazaria meningitis, hemophilus influenzae and streptococcus pneumonia. These are capsulated bacteria and good doctors know that, that to eliminate the capsulated bacteria we need spleen because Spleen help us to make such antibodies which act as opsonins. For example, if this is a bacteria and this bacteria has a big capsule, right? Spleen make antibodies. On one, one side they can bind with the bacteria and other side these antibodies can have receptors on the macrophage. These are the receptors of the, on the macrophage. So, such bacteria, right, which are have coated by the antibodies, such antibodies which can interact through their tail with the tail portion of the antibody is also called FC portion of the antibody, right. FC portion of the antibody can bind with special receptors on macrophages and activate the macrophages and that lead to facilitated phagocytosis of this bacteria, right, of course, we should make this bacteria very, very sad. Right? But the problem is this, if splenectomy is there, then this function is impaired, 
right and bacteria will be very very happy and multiplying and risk of septicemia is very very high is that clear secondly another problem related with spleen is congestive spleen congestive spleen let me explain uh, do you know portal vein how it is made portal vein is made by two veins superior mesenteric vein and splenic vein and both of them mesenteric vein and splenic vein they drain into portal vein and what is this liver and in the liver portal vein break down into sinusoids and then sinusoids collect into central vein and central veins go out as hepatic veins you must be knowing things like this of course macrophage should not be there and this is inferior vena cava so what really happens that splenic vein and superior mesenteric vein unite together make portal vein portal blood should percolate through the liver right now there is a disease of liver called cirrhosis in cirrhosis what really happens that liver develop generalized fibrosis with multiple nodules and these fibrotic processes and nodularity of the liver nodules in liver and fibrotic processes in liver they destroy the vasculature of the liver when vasculature of the liver is significantly destroyed then can blood through the splenic artery blood will be coming to the spleen but can it drain well no so because portal vein cannot drain well so pressure in the portal vein will become lower high so there's portal hyper tension and there's back pressure going to spleen and spleen become enlarged so the splenomegaly in portal hypertension there is splenomegaly spleen become enlarged is it right and this enlarged spleen I usually have a capsule which is so called sugar coated dots on the capsule actually there are special type of uh, in congested spleen on its capsule there are special type of granulated you can say deposits of iron and calcium these iron and calcium deposits are called I don't know it's a funny name these deposits calcium and iron deposits are called who knows them these deposits are called Gandhi I don't know it's a funny name Gandhi what's the second part I don't remember no not Gandhi Gandhi there should be another name for this I think I have to see it Gamna I think this should be a name of a girl Gamna Gandhi Gamna granules Gandhi Gamna granules these are granules present uh, iron and calcium granules with some fibrotic material present in congested chronically congested spleen right another problem related with spleen is Feltes syndrome Feltes syndrome in this syndrome person has three problems number one he has splenomegaly spleno very large spleen number two patient has rheumatoid arthritis number two patient has rheumatoid arthritis and number three patient has neutropenia what is meaning of neutropenia neutrophil count is low in the blood abnormally low neutrophil count neutropenia so those patients who have rheumatoid arthritis with splenomegaly and neutropenia are said to be suffering with Feltes syndrome. So this was all about spleen at this stage. Do you have any question? There's no question. Last dismissed.